Before sharing what I'm about to share, it is imperative that you consider getting the book put together by Vern Bates at vbates.com titled A Study of the 1884 Great Controversy Changes because there is no online version available. And for those that prefer the video that the book was transcribed from so as to read along, check out the DVD titled The Loud Cry, Parts 1 and 2, and there's also another video where it's specifically just about changing the books. And when you get these, you will most assuredly be shocked at what you find. And just so you know, no, I am not sponsored by Echoes from the Past at vbates.com in any way. I have known and spoken to Brother Vern over the years many times before he went to sleep in the Lord. And as far as I know, this ministry is the only one that has the original Spirit of Prophecy writings intact before the SDA Church edited them. And so that's why I have no problem promoting them. There are so many things that have been removed and added to the 1884 Great Controversy that I will not be able to make a video on all of it, but I may share other videos as my studies continue, so please continue to stop by and watch the videos. But I will share something today that literally shocked me last Sabbath when I was studying into this. Every one of the changes are absolute evidence that Rome has literally taken over the SDA church. As expected, these apostate leaders simply don't want people to know what's coming or what signs are going to be visible that herald the arrival of our Lord in great detail, because if they know these signs, they will lose the tithe money they give them because they're going to leave the church. What I found, and I'm about to share, is going to set quite a few people in and outside the church. But what most are unaware of, even to this day, is that the SDA church removed most of the very important information regarding the loud cry and how it comes about from their many edited versions of the Great Controversy. The way they did the editing allowed for a false belief structure back then that is still running rampant in the church today that is causing people in the church to think the loud cry is to be a major revival of primitive godliness within the SDA church that moves the people to proclaim present truth worldwide, when in fact this event is prophesied to be missed by nearly everyone on earth and absolutely every person still in the Seventh-day Adventist church when it begins. Only the obedient child of God will be used of God in this final movement. No getting around that biblical fact. This is why Satan moved the SDA leaders to make the changes. The enemy of souls knew the prophecy is only revealed to the obedient ones that follow the Lamb with us so wherever he goeth. But in 1888, the SDA leaders rejected Christ our righteousness and all the obedient people of God left the apostate church because truth can never be proclaimed by those in apostasy. The SDA leaders knew about this, and so to keep the people in the pews, they altered the writings in the same way Rome rewrote the Bibles to generate a mindset of peace and safety. What I'm about to read has been completely removed from the SDA's version of the Great Controversy and then replaced with a claim of a great revival in the church that they now use to make the people believe they need to stay with the ship. But before sharing what they removed, notice what they replaced it with in the edited Great Controversy. It says this, before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be, among the people of the Lord, such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. Now, even though this quote I just read shows up nine times word for word in the Ellen White DVD, which also means they placed it in nine different books claiming Ellen White wrote it, you will not find this statement or even one similar to it anywhere in her original writings. In fact, this is what she really said in the 1884 Great Controversy on page 295 and 296. She said this, Notwithstanding the widespread declension of faith and piety in the churches, the Lord still has honest children among them, and before his judgment shall be visited upon the earth, many ministers and lay members will separate from these bodies and gladly receive the special truths for this time, the enemy of souls desires to hinder this work, and before the time shall come for such a movement, he will arouse what appears to be a great religious interest in the churches. 
they will exult that God is working marvelously for them when the work is that of another spirit under a religious guise. Satan will spread his influence over the land. He hopes to deceive many by leading them to think that God is still with the churches. What I just read was completely removed from the original Great Controversy of 1884. You have to realize, brothers and sisters, that they removed all of this and replaced it with their own words for a reason. And keep in mind, when she says churches, she means the SDA churches. Like all patriarchs and prophets before her, she speaks about the true church before, during, and even after their fall, because as we all know, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, judgment must begin at the house of God. Prophets need not speak or even prophesy unto non-believing churches in this manner. Prophetic utterance is never given to them. Prophets only declare unto them to repent before they can grasp such truth. She is prophesying here to warn those still trapped in apostasy to get out before it's too late. That's why Revelation 18.4 says, My people, when warning those in Babylon or any church in bed with Babylon, about leaving those churches before the plagues begin. And because this false movement in the SDA church has been festering for many decades, we now see the people have been conditioned to defend their apostate leaders who tell them to stay with the ship in the same way the congregates of Rome defend their priests, prelates, and popes. Just as prophesied, they do this knowing every Seventh-day Adventist agrees, like the Catholics, that their church is in apostasy. And just so you know, no getting around the biblical fact that apostasy is, in fact, the main fruit of any and all churches in bed with Babylon. Now, even though their state of apostasy is common knowledge in the SDA church from the pulpit to the pew, as prophesied, they are still taught and then believe that God is still with the churches, just as Sister White said they would. This is also why a man like David Gates can step up and boldly call Jesus Christ and Ellen White a liar by setting dates and using Vatican dogma to change how prophetic time is defined. Yet this type of prophetic heresy doesn't phase some of the precious SDA people that are still trapped in apostasy. I mean, I have emails, blog entries, phone calls, and many YouTube comments from people defending David Gates even now after his prophecy failed on many counts confirming this as fact. Something so blunt as to prophesy falsely and even change Bible prophecy and how it's defined no longer matters for many of the dear SDA people because they are moved by the long prophesied ravenous wolves to be dead set on staying with the ship all the way until it sinks under plague number seven. But there is still a short period of time, brothers and sisters, and so pray for them. And do the work you know the Holy Spirit is moving you to do right now. Get the original books and place them in their hands because the SDA people better than most know the validity of those books and the testimony of Jesus Christ, which we all know is the spirit of prophecy. Thank you for watching. God bless.